Today we talk about a new topic, topological insulator, and it's closely related with the spherical coupling I mentioned on Tuesday. And uh, uh, here, I would say, like, uh, at the, for my own experience, at the beginning when I uh, touched this concept, I, I was quite lucky. I had a chance to ask a lot of stupid questions, and uh, yeah, also lucky there are people around to answer my questions. And uh, this helped me a lot later. I just understand them quickly. And uh, my feeling, like uh, also my communication with my students or postdocs, they're my feeling like uh, if one already understand it, everything is just so simple. It's, uh, because there's no, no much unclear arguments. And uh, you're really like a single band model or, like, or one particle model is enough. And, uh, However, if you are not know it so that, that much, then everything is confusing. It's really confusing. There are a lot of uh, questions like I had, but I hope today is you, you guys just please ask your, your questions as much as you can. And uh, then I also start slowly with some examples. And uh, let's see, at the beginning, what way we are touched? Like, uh, we will start from like uh, how this idea was started in the early days of this field, like uh, it was 10 years ago or 11 years ago. And uh, then we will touch this concept, how, how the topology is defined, then what is the topology in future, and who are these materials. Like these materials, we will go through them one by one and analyze the band structure. And uh, I hope this, actually this, their band structure in some sense, is a kind of simple. And uh, hope we will do it on the board by hand, one by one, and uh, follow it slowly. Then hope later you can understand them well. And then also a little about the recent progress. And I will mention a little about this mirror insulator, or you heard as like topological crystalline insulator. And let's start from like some common sense, like our, we, we know very well what happened with our computer and smartphone, and it is always get overheating, and uh, at least uh, once a day. And uh, we know well the reason is here, this jewel's heat. The, why this heat from? It's just because when electron travel in your device, in your smartphone, and it gets scattered for many reasons, scattered by the lattice, and uh, by the impurity, and uh, then this scattering gives the resistance. Then resistance, because of the resistance, you have the heating. And uh, well, there are many solutions. Why is like here? Then this is exactly what happened inside this electronic device. Like in this market position, uh, here, when people, tr when you want to go through this market, you are scattered randomly. Then this really make it very low efficient. And then, in the human society, we already know we already developed this highway system, simply just separate the left moving and right moving. People just go at a different edge, different boundary, this is already super efficient. And then the question is, can we make the electron in the material travel similarly in this way? And if it works, it will be very efficient. And well, when we talk about the resistance, and uh, you might already think about the superconductivity, right? And it's another solution. And about here, and uh, let's think a little, well, superconductivity always needs a very low temperature, but maybe this solution can give something different. And actually, this idea was already realized in the system called quantum hall. And uh, we know what is the hall effect, like if we have a 2D electron gas, just a 2D system, you apply magnetic field, like across this plane, and then there you will mirror the, <coughs> <coughs> then you will get a wattage drop at here, from here to here. You mirror the wattage, you <coughs> the wattage over the, cur over the current is the whole resistance. And uh, then what is this quantized version? In the quantized version, it simply means like, 
election only travel on the, on the edge, not go through from here anymore. Because the field is so strong enough, and the, all this region, the electron get localized. When we begin localized, it's like here. We know electron gets cyclotron. In this cyclotron orbital in the magnetic field, and they just get this cyclotron motion in the, in the center region. But as long as this orbital touch the boundary, and it gets scattered from the boundary. Because the, the, this cyclotron orbital always go to one direction. It's decided by the field direction. And then the scattering will scatter this one from here to here to here to here. Then that means along this edge, in this range, the electron always move to the right. Oppositely, at this edge, we always move to the left. Then equivalently, we, get, we realize a system like this conducts only along the edge, but here in the center is insulating. And thanks this state only travel to one direction. Even it gets scattering, even there's an impurity, or we see this boundary, and there's some scattering. However, it does not change the moving direction of the electron. Then it cannot go back. Then that means along this line, there's no resistance. And uh, this is already realized a way of this high V, and just keep moving, cannot scatter back. Or there's uh, like they mean this, this system has some robustness against uh, the back scattering. And uh, well, this is the ideal plot about uh, this edge, uh, edge connection of the quantum core system. And uh, this was discovered in 1981. And uh, <coughs> later, people quickly realized uh, of why this is called quantized quantum core system, quantum core effect, because here, the conductivity, conductance of this system is quantized. And it's uh, all we write this way. We are familiar with this. This is the Hall resistance. is defined. This is the transverse voltage drop. And this is the current go through. And uh, then uh, similarly, we can define the conductivity. And, uh, in the quantum ball system, this whole conductivity actually is always quantized, like it's not continual anymore. It's quantized in this way. We know this is conductance quantum. And here is always a quantized value. And how large the value, it will depend the strength on the strength of the field. And uh, can you read this figure? No, I plot it larger. Like this is the field increase. This is the conductance in here. You start to see some step. The final step will be like, yeah, equal to one, two, three, and this is a higher lambda level. And here, that's, that's why it's called quantum Hall effect. It could quantize. And uh, like in this range, like you will have a <coughs> strong edge state here. And uh, if A equal to 2, that may, it, in a semi classical way, you can think there are two edge states, just two edge states go around. And three, there are three edge states. For what? Uh, This, you can think of it as a spinless system. Yeah, yeah, because the field is so strong there. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter much. Yeah. yeah. And if we think about, if we suppose, yeah, is even in this strong field case, if we can still keep the periodicity under there, suppose we plot a band structure with this system, how it looks like. We know here, in the center here is not conducting anymore. Then it's an insulator. This is the bulk. Bulk is the insulator. But at the edge, there's some edge states. It's metallic. It's conducting. And then, and another feature is it all only go to one direction. The velocity of the electron only go to one direction. And then that means we will have edge states. 
for example. This is a state for one edge. And here, give you the velocity. The velocity go to, go to the right. And if you see, this blue edge is opposite. And in the other edge, you will see a different state, different edge state. And here, since this state always go to one direction, usually we call this edge state as chiral edge state. And this corresponding to a system, see, here you have only edge state going here, here you have another edge state going here, but it's, it's only connecting at the boundary and in the center is insulating. And this is roughly the so-called band structure at that time, actually, this might be the first time in kinetic matter the idea of topology was introduced. Why? Is the topology here means this n, this n is closely related with the barrier phase of the system. Or, in short, is the barrier phase. Suppose in the center we have a bulk band structure, is this part. And then the barrier phase is for only considered for the wireless band, we always project it out. And then there's a barrier phase. The barrier phase and is directly related here. You can, well, this is the formula to calculate the barrier phase, as we already learned yesterday. And uh, this number, n, maybe, suppose there's a barrier phase over 2 pi. This is this n, the system. And uh, here, we already know, like, why we why it's kind of topological, or what these words exactly mean. Since this is a, like, if we see in, the, in this system, if i equal to y here. Here, the system actually, the, in, the, in a large window, when we tune the field, the field, the field doesn't change. The system doesn't change. And here, more importantly, the spark, the spark gap doesn't close. And then what happened on, at the transition here? Actually, at the transition, that means here, the bulk gap, when you tune the field, the bulk gap starts to touch. And then they open again. When they touch, then there's a jump. When they open again, and they change to another state. This means this state, they are, they are characterized by the number n. And, but as long as they go to this n state, they're kind of a relatively robust state, whatever the, how large the gap is, as, as long as the gap is not closed. There's no transition. Gap closing corresponding to a kind of gap transition. And this is the quantum hole. Later, here, let's see what, what's happening for the quantum hole. Quantum hole simply like for the motion of electrons. This is the moving direction for like a 1D system. Like separate them, the left moving and the right moving at different edge of, the, <coughs> of this bulk. And this is realized, like in this system, this quantum pole is realized in the gallium arsenide to the electron gas. And we, we also know their electron system has a, electron has another freedom. Yeah, this is, that one freedom is we call is the moving direction, the momentum. Another is spin. And actually, like for the right moving, you can have either spin up and spin down, left moving is same. And uh, then later, people have an idea to separate, like, well, now that we have four possibilities, to separate these four possibilities to two edges. Then, that simply means on the right moving, and here, you have right moving and left moving, but they have opposite spin. And this side, you have another opposite one. And the idea simply, actually, suppose this is a quantum hole system, it corresponding to spin up. Everywhere is spin up. If you have another quantum hole system, the moving direction is opposite. Then everywhere is spin down. Pull them together, and you will get this picture. And <coughs> people call it quantum spin hole. And first, the spin is strongly involved here. We must include spin, and the quantum spin hole. <coughs> At that time, it means the spin, the spin hole connectivity is quantized. And, but we will come back later. And then that idea, early, that idea was like, let's, 
put two opposite quantum ball systems together. And uh, then we might realize a different one. And why people think about it? Because one reason, because here, first we already know to realize such a system, we definitely need a very strong magnetic field. And uh, how, like how strong it can be, like I don't know what exactly it was realized, at least the, in the range of several Tesla, for sure, and maybe even larger. And uh, also extremely low temperature. Then you need this material, gallium arsenide, maybe the, the best 2D electron gas so far, to be very clean, to, <coughs> to have super high mobility. And otherwise, this orbital will be scattered by defects. And then, people start to think, why get this idea? This idea means, like, suppose this is a quantum hole, it's corresponding to the field get out. And this one, because its motion is opposite, it's corresponding to opposite field. We put them together, maybe we don't need a magnetic field. And uh, then the question is always, like, whether it's robust, it can be realized. Though. And uh, <coughs> how to make it in a real material? And then, let's, okay, let's can you see it. Then people start to realize there might be an idea. It's called the spin orbital coupling. And uh, as we talked on Tuesday, and the spin orbital coupling is simply this L dot S or S dot L. And here, here from this simple Antonia, you can recognize like here spin like to always like if alpha is positive, they are always prefer anti parallel. And then L is this angular momentum, like let's think it less this cyclotron orbital. And uh, that means spin up and down electron, they actually themselves, they can form a kind of, such kind of quantum system without external magnetic field. It feel uh, <coughs> effective field from the spin of the coupling. They spin up and down feel opposite field. Then they just exactly form such a system. And well, because well, these two layers actually this just happen together in the in the same material, and up and down. Then naturally, we can put them together. We realize a system like this. We have edge states conducting on the edge, and it is in the center is insulating. And uh, this is the idea from the quantum hall. And uh, then, for actually people got at this idea quite early, and uh, just. Uh, it was quite confusing at that time whether this system is robust. And uh, are there some protection? For example, here we assume when spin is moving, and like this up spin, it should always go point up, if not flip, not in this way or not have some precision. And uh, in this simple picture, and uh, this one is saying for spin down should not change. That means spin up and down should not mix. However, what is spin of the coupling? Spin of the coupling exactly means up and down should mix in some way. And uh, then this seems quite contradictory. Uh, then in 2005, the time Ken and Emily, they started a material, graphene. You know graphene was the discovered in experiment in 2004 or three? What time was? Maybe four, yeah. And uh, then that time they just used graphene as an ideal model as, as we said, this Duracoin band structure, the very simple band structure, and they started their system, they realized there, there's a special protection. They can define a different topological environment. And as long as that, this environment is defined, then that means it's topologically, there's kind of topological protection. Like this number N, this barrier face. Uh, naturally, you may ask, can we use barrier face to define this system? And uh, unfortunately, here, suppose here, spin up, because it's moving in this direction, give you a pi barrier phase. Spin down, give you a minus pi barrier phase. Then in total, your system, you have zero, or two pi, zero and two pi, they're equivalent. And uh, then that means this chain number doesn't work well. And even this chain number work, they spin, they, they flip, because of spin the coupling. And uh, then that means this, Spin that like simply means this SZ is not a good quantum number, and <coughs> you cannot simply use it. Like 
Uh, actually, people propose the idea, use the SZ, like for spin up, you define a chain number, like chain number up. Uh, uh, sorry, I want to mention, people also call this N as a chain number, and that's related with the barrier phase here. And then for spin down, you define another chain number. Well, they are opposite, no problem. They are always, this is positive one, this is minus one. And it doesn't matter. As long as this can be well defined, you can judge something like plus, my in this way, you will still get an integer number, non-zero number. You can distinguish from, you can distinguish from a case like zero. In this case, minus, they're different. This spin to number can distinguish you. But always the question is whether spin is a good quantum number or not. And then here, as long as Kian Melin defined this Z2 number, then everything is clear. Well, because since this is a topological system, as long as this topological invariant, for example, in the, top, in the quantum system is defined, then many questions just becomes very clear. And but later we go to the detail how this Z2 is defined. And then let's see from which example, maybe. Oh, let's see, yeah, let's go ahead with, with here. And uh, let's think something slightly different. Actually here, this Z2 number is really defined with a bulk band structure. You don't have to think about the boundary, what happens here. You, you just check the bulk region and the band structure of the system, or give you a material, as long as you know the bulk band structure, you will immediately get a, you, you get this topological number, and you will eventually know on the boundary whether there are topological states, uh, edge states or surface states. And then let's see, let's come back to the band structure. This is simple band structure. Uh, <coughs> insulator, as well as band conduction band, and as we already see, Many materials, the valence band and conduction band, they usually have different symmetry. Or at least, always in this way, they usually form different atomic orbital. Like, already, we already said for gallium arsenide or silicon. I changed the color. It's not your read, actually. Uh, for read. No, 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 the, so the color. The, color. Uh, the red, maybe not good. Blue or blue? Easily run out. Better. <laughs> I tried this. Uh, yeah. uh, we already know, like, we said gallium arsenide. We plotted there are some bands. This is spin orbital splitting. And you see they are from the P orbital. Oh, oh thank you. I have too much here. This is from gallium S orbital. And if it's silicon, then this is silicon itself, P orbital, silicon S orbital. And you already have different symmetry. And uh, they form a gap. This is we know. Before, for quite, well, actually the band structure, maybe the, one of the very successful example when we apply the quantum mechanics in the real material to understand the material. And here, it explained well what is an insulator, what is a semiconductor, or what is a metal. Like, uh, even here, like suppose, here for semiconductor, if it has slightly doping, then here in this region we have electron carriers. It will tell you here, yeah, you integrate here, you get the carrier density. And here this region is the Fermi velocity. It's the, yeah, this gradient corresponding to the Fermi velocity. You know electron here is going to the, this side, electron is here going to this direction. And when we mix, yeah, also you, you can get the effective mass. Yeah, from here. And uh, 
the, actually here, before, when we use the band structure theory, when we think about it, actually this theory is almost 100 years. And uh, then this theory, actually we, most of the time, we just think in one band. Let's just, we did in the fourth semiconductor or metal case. We just think some, some area very close to the firm energy. And, or even only, only this area that close, cross the firm energy. And then somehow we mainly, we are very familiar with the one band model. And, but we really think whether this band, there, the interaction between this band or some, there are some entanglement. And then the topological insulator idea is, is exactly about the entanglement. And suppose we have a band structure on the right in that way. The color does tell you the symmetry. And suppose here you still have the S band, but in this region you have some P band. And there I plotted in yeah, inverted way, but doesn't matter. Here, this region, S band, this is P band. These two bands, they are mixed. They're mixed in this region. And then in the center, in, in the, here, the band order of wireless band and conduction band, in some way, they are switched. And they are getting inverted. And uh, in kinesmeter, usually we call it a band inversion. That simply means this, yeah, what, what really happened is actually this band energy becomes higher, this band energy becomes lower, then at the band touching point, they hybridize. After hybridization, you get a band structure like this. Well, if the touching is a little less, it looks like this way. If touching is very much, they look like this way. And then there is something topology come out. Suppose, like, we put this system and this system together, and we form an interface. What will happen? Suppose you are the electron, we are traveling here from the valence band here. You, like, it has a p orbital feature, and then we it evolve to the second material. It will go to this side because they have the same symmetry. And for this one, it will go to this side, just mostly involved. And then that means the valence band, connection band here, they must touch somewhere and then reopen again. This touching region should be close to the interface. Maybe exactly at the interface, or interface is not a well-defined concept. It's, well, at least it has some thickness. We don't know where exactly. But this means this should touch somewhere and open again. Because this one will go up, this one will go down. Simply because of the symmetry of the wave function. And then that means, what's this touching mean? This touching mean here, the band gap is zero at, at this region. And this region only happens in some layer, has some thickness. And not happen here, as long as here is fine enough, here is fine enough, but in the middle, somewhere should become metallic. This metallic happens on the interface. This just, in another word, just means you will have metallic interface state, or, mit inter <coughs> or metallic surface states. Here we talk, we'll talk about we put two material together, right? We form an interface. Suppose one side is vacuum. For example, this side or that side. And uh, then there's a question whether this material has the same type of symmetry with the vacuum. And uh, then we already know for normal material like silicon or this, this insulator, there's no metallic surface states. It's interface with the vacuum. Yeah. Then this one might have. Well, this simple picture tells us just one simple argument. This gap insulator can be classified into two groups. One is inverted, another is not inverted. And if we simply take a vacuum as a band structure, as a normal band structure without any inversion, just a trivial insulator, and uh, well, it's also not a very surprised vacuum is insulator, or the air does not conduct. And then we know there's one group has no surface states, and another group will have surface states because it has an interface with the vacuum. And uh, then this surface states means if you have a topological material, it means every surface, because every surface is a, some, there's some topological transition here. 
And here, suppose here we have, then they, they all, we talk in a different way. If we define a topological number here, they, we have a, another topological number, like zero or one, and one. And here, that means when we cross a material, much, some much same system with a different topological number, and this generally means the, the, this bulk gap should be closed first and open again. As, as we see something here, like even in the quantum hall, they have different topological number, then they will, they will close the gap. And uh, this will be similar for, in, from, that's from this simple cartoon. And then we see a little like how the topology is defined or why it's called topological insulator. And uh, actually we, from the, this left figure, we know like two material, if they have same symmetry. It's just, I, I just say it's not necessary to close the gap there. For some material, they might have surface states, metallic surface states, it's no one. Even silicon has there, if there's some reconstruction, you have surface states. And, uh, but it's not very robust. Suppose you remove the re reconstruction or you remove the downing bonds, this surface is just disappear. And however, on the right, this band closing, it, they, they must be there. And as long as two sides are different. And then on the left, we see like this small gap insulator, the larger gap insulator, there are many differences. The size of the bands, this gap are different. But topologically, they are same. Topology simply means you can deform one band structure smoothly to another without closing this bulk energy gap. Now what we are talking is only bulk. And then however, in the right case, yeah, or in this case, you cannot go from this band structure smoothly to that one without closing this gap. Yeah, you have to close and open again. And this tells you this kind of smooth deformation idea is this is the topology. This is how the topology defined. Actually, this is exactly the in mathematician how this referred as. Um, then, since this is this insulator is already tell you, you already have a feeling that some insulator are different from others. And then this special inverted one, and we call them topological insulator. Let's go next. Then, simply then, as I said, how can we get this banding inversion? One example is spin over the coupling. Like, this is a band structure. Suppose we ignore the spin over coupling. We get a valence band connection band. If spin over coupling is strong enough, then it will push the valence band connection band across. After crossing, they open a new gap. And uh, this new gap is an inverted gap. Then, we will know on the surface, Inside of this gap, there will be metallic surface states. And uh, how the dispersion looks like. And from here, we already know these chiral states. And if we put them together, and now we have a new system. You have one surface state in this way. It's supposed to spin up. You have another state. It's spin down. And how the band structure looks like. In the middle, the bulk is always insulating. There we know. And if we look at the edge, we see two edge states. Their velocity are opposite. One go left, one go right. Suppose this is going to the right direction, this way, spin up. This is go left. Then it's velocity here, this way, spin down. And this is a general case. Well, this is the these states are 1D edge states. So as here we plot a <coughs> 2D system. And when generalize this idea, like in a 3D material, you have most of the material are 3D. And we can also have this band inversion. And then these states can be generalized in a 3D case. And then how it looks like, you can think like this, you make a rotation. This one form a three-dimensional Dirac one. And this is usually in the literature what you see here, the Dirac one. Yeah. Yeah. Where it is? Oh, very good. Good question. 
Suppose the version here. This is a bulk band structure. We always know when we think about the edge states, we have to project this bulk band structure out, right? Then after the projection, you get a band structure similar like this. Its shape looks like but there are many sub-bands. You get continue here. And then these edge states will be here. Inside this inverted gap. Yeah, when you project this part on the surface. I suppose this is gamma point. In your blue zone, you have many other high symmetry points, X, Y, Z, right? Suppose, no, yeah. We Suppose a cubic system. You have a gamma point, x, y, z, this point. You project to the x, y plane. Then you have just a square, gamma bar, x bar, y bar. The z and the gamma project at the same point. And if the band inversion happens here, then in a most simple case, you will have a Dirac crossing here. This band, because band inversion here, band inversion project to the boundary. You get it. Yeah. But well, there are some exception cases. If the, the, here we assume the surface is very smooth. After the projection, nothing, no others happen. Later I will show you like, if there are the surface, there are additional surface states, like Dunleavy's trivial surface states, not from topology. They will have some hybridization. After hybridization, it looks very complicated. Yeah. But I will show you the example later. Yeah. Let's. Now, just make it simple. We have a band structure inverted. Now we understand this inverted band structure will cause some, edge, some boundary states. For 2D, the boundary is the 1D edge. For 3D, the boundary is the surface. And then go to a little detail in the momentum space. If the band inversion happens at some point after the projection, you will see a kind of Dirac-like surface state near this point. And if we have inver many inversion, suppose here, and formally, like, the simple idea is just project as much as there. And uh, later I will show you, there are some interactions, suppose you have two inversion here. When they project, they project to the same point, right? Then there will be two Dirac coins. These two Dirac coins will have some interaction. In many cases, they just cancel each other. Now th I will show you now. Here. Oh. oh, yeah. This is a later example. Like, uh, since we mentioned there are topological surface states, then what is different from uh, normal surface states we experience? For example, here, this is just some Rashba states. Rashba electron states, a parabolic band gets Rashba splitting. And uh, it has a, this is a, this chiral spin structure, and this one, it has only one Fermi surface, but this spin chirality, just the same. And uh, the, what's the difference between these two systems? Uh, one argument it, it is, since here, we call it topology, just always uh, about uh, this kind of topological argument, can we deform the one system smoothly to the, to the other? Like, can we deform this, um, this system to this one? Or can we deform this system to this one? Like, for example, this one. We can always, like, in the system, you can always smoothly add some perturbation to the system and then shift this state up into the valence band. And at the same time, this bulk gap doesn't, doesn't close. And maybe it becomes smaller. Suppose it becomes smaller. We just pull the conduction band down in this region. And then, you get an insulator. It looks not very different from this one, right? Then this state is trivial. And uh, well, this is another typical s surface states, like impurity states. They just were flat inside of the gap. And this one can be easily moved away, like you just push it away. And uh, then it's also equivalent to, to an insulator, looks like an insulator. But however, this one, whether you push it up or push it down, because for each of states, it always starts from conduction band and end at the valence band, and whatever you push it. Uh, and then it's always there. And important is here, like when two bands are crossing there, this, actually this crossing point is super robust. This robust uh, is like, has some symmetry protection. It's protect, protected by the time reversal symmetry. 
as long as here the system is not non-magnetic and uh, you don't have external magnetic field, then you preserve the time reversal symmetry in the system. Then this point, is, this is simply the Kramer's degeneracy here. It's always double degenerate. That means the bands always cross. You cannot gap it and move them away. It cannot become a simple insulator. And it's also different from a metal. Well, we know a metal. For a metal, the frame energy actually cross the valence band or connection band, cross the middle of the band. Give you a lot of carriers. Actually, here, it only here, uh, stay at this position, and then only your surface conducting. Metal everywhere is conducting. And then for the Rashba state, and uh, we, s we already see here a lot of similarity between them. Like here, for Rashba state, here, you also have a robust band crossing. No problem. It's, it's also related with time reversal symmetry. And then it has very similar spin chirality. Like, then what happened, like, can we think about evolve this way to this, to this one? Even though there are some topological transition, how this might happen? And let's think. Uh, it's, it's still conduction wireless band. Here, you have some strong rush bus state. And there are surface states. And uh, whatever, well, you maybe push it quite down, but it still starts from here and end here, right? It cannot cross here. Then one possibility, like really, like we want to actually put this two edge to the, well, to the wireless band. Then we realize the topological way. And then how to do it. And uh, then actually what will happen is when you try to push it down, then later something will happen on the bulk band structure. The connection band and wireless band, it's not good to plot the same figure. The connection band and wireless band, they might first touch 